It was interesting and we're coming to an end. I think I'm supposed to summarize the event. Uh, I found that event very inspiring, so I'd like to thank all of you who contributed to the success of this with talks, with inputs, with questions, with comments, uh, also in the coffee break. And, um, that was ex uh, an extremely beneficial experience, I would say. But I think we should have more of these events because there's a long way ahead. I think what we saw is that digital technologies are transforming our society quite fundamentally. In many cases we haven't seen to what extent actually they have already transformed society. It looks similar, you know, like the houses are still there and the trams and the subways, you know, and that looks similar as 10 or 20 years ago somehow, but the world works in a different way, right? So it turns out we're living in an attention economy suddenly, we're flooded with information and the scarce thing is attention even more than money, at least in some countries. And that this has changed the mechanisms uh, according to which the world works. The mechanism of power that also created more inequality. It has uh, created basically a new world, a cyber physical world, as uh, Paul Dukovic would call it. And we haven't really learned how this world works at school, at universities, you know, we're in the process of figuring that out and what we discover is sometimes surprising, sometimes shocking and what's clear is that we need to pay attention to all sorts of unexpected implications intended, unintended, dual use, whatever but for sure we are in a transformation of our society that means that our society is in an instability for sure, also, it turns out that the world is not just digital. There are still these material constraints and that applies to sustainability issues and, and other issues that may lead to conflict and war and so on. So, you know, there, there are challenges out there that need to be addressed. A, a lot of the drivers of these new technologies um, seem to be not directly addressing those challenges out there. You know, it's just coming up with games, with entertainment, you know, in some sense, bread and games, you know, distraction. Um, and I'm not so sure what will remain, say, in a thousand years from now. We, we have pyramids, we have temples, you know, which are thousands of years old. Right? That tells us about previous times and the accomplishments of these times. The question is, what will remain of these times, these digital times? You know, and we should think about this. Uh, are we accomplishing something that is really lifting humanity to the next level? And how to do that, actually? You know, what does it take to get to the next level? And I think this is what we should try to do, actually. You know, it's, it's pretty clear that the technology will have in 15 years will sound like science fiction today and maybe even in 10 or 5 years. So, you know, if, if we're talking about the future, I think we need to learn to talk about the future more in terms of science fiction stories. We need to be more imaginative, more visionary, uh, really, because Otherwise, we're not going to be co-designer of this world or be consumers, but we're not create this new world. And I think um, if we want the future world to be as we like it to be, we need to co-create it. We need to know where we want to go. And knowing where we want to go requires that we make up our minds and we discuss about this and figure out a plan, a strategy, how to do it together basically. Otherwise other people will decide it for us and it might not be the kind of society that we would want to live in. So this is the time and I think the nice thing about digital technologies is that it really empowers people if you want to use it for this. You know, we can now 
communicate with the end of the world. We can organize ourselves with all sorts of people, with all sorts of cultural backgrounds, with all sorts of discipline backgrounds. We could make a, a double projects, sell our products, use 3D printers to produce. We don't need to invest a million or a billion to produce products or services and we can scale it up in principle. You know, Skype is a very nice example actually for this, right? The decentralized system is used by millions of people with the resources that were there. You know, how can we make use of the resources that are there? I was mentioning NerviceNet as a possibility to turn that as into a collective measurement device that would produce data as a common good. You know, we could be doing these kind of things. And so the question is, when, when are we taking action to make it happen? Now, to what extent has it already happened? Um, how can we bring together different communities and activities? And what I'd like to see is that, that particularly the, the young generation would be more visible in the media and the public because if we talk about the future and how the future society should look like, you know, it should be built for you, basically, right? So we need to know <laughs> how you think it should be looking like. So that, that's why it was very important for me to have this final panel. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. I'd like to thank Michaela uh, Tsap for the fantastic organization. <laughs> There's also supporting the organization from the Zurich side, so Philip Marks, who is from the Complexity Science House, with various photographers that have been supporting this event. And uh, if you feel you have been left out, I think every single one of you was really crucial for the success of this event, and I'm very happy about the outcome. So, have a great trip home, have a good time, and hope to see you back sometime in the future and let's do something together. Bye-bye.